Hello everybody and welcome to today's video about a very very cool topic docker and containers now this is probably the 1 million video about docker and I know that but I guess just to complete some things within our history within the channel I just wanna show you how to set up a very very simple docker setup for your application now to start with let's see which versions of docker and docker compose I am running 17.05 for Docker and 1.11 for Docker Compose. I know there are different versions out there. Um, just is just for reference in case, uh, yeah, Docker gets updated, which happens regularly. Now, why Docker? Take a look at this. I have Python 3.5.2. Let's say you are on Ubuntu and you're gonna just like Google. How do I get Python 3.6 on my Ubuntu 16.04? How do I get Python 3.4 on my Ubuntu 18.04 or stuff like that? Now, there is ways out there, don't get me wrong, there is ways out there to do that, but you will most likely just gonna break your system uh, some way or another, which is definitely not good. So, a good, another way to do it is like Docker, and you can just say like Docker run minus interactive terminal uh, Python 3.6 bash. This will tell Docker to download the Python 3.6 container, which I already have on my uh, PC, so you're not going to see the download. I'm going to do a 3.4 for you, so you see the download. And it will tell this container to start a bash. You will need this if you're like saying, well, I have a newer version of Ubuntu, but I need to develop for a Debian server. And you just want to make sure that you're not using anything in that is not in Python 3.4. This could be Python features, this could be performance optimizations, this could be bugs, this could be other things. Like You just want to make sure you have the same environment on your local development machine than you have on your server. And Docker is really great for that. I'm just going to start this. It will tell us it's downloading the layer. That's okay. And in a couple of seconds, we will go on a see a shell. I mean, I'm in a shell already. I'm in a terminal. But we're going to end up as user root in that Docker um, container because we said, well, go to Python and start a bash. Good. So why? what is this doing in the meantime? This is fetching all the layers that are necessary for the Python uh, Docker image. Some of them are bigger, maybe the base image is bigger, some of them are smaller, like some pip upgrades or stuff like that. Uh, in the end, we will just, like when this one is downloaded, we'll extract everything uh, and we will get into the container. Each container is a little different. I mean, there is newer versions of Python, there is newer versions of pip, and you should probably just go to Docker Hub Python, which will show you this page. Uh, hub.docker.com slash python or underscore slash python and will tell you oh there is 3.7 beta and release candidate uh, based on stretch that's Debian stretch there is also a python image based on Alpine oh my god there is a python image based on Windows Server Core all you Windows people out there that's for you and there is python 3.6.5 and 3.5 2.7 like all the things that are still in use kind of in production. All right, we're in the image now. You can see we are root. What can I do? I can do Python minus minus version, and you will see we're using Python 3.4.8. And this is without breaking our operating systems Python installation or side packages directory or anything else. And we could just do like pip install Django, and it will install Django for us in this Docker container without breaking our system installation of Python. That's a plus. All right, um, now how do you get your application into that, right? That's not uh, that's not really helpful. Well, that's quite easy. You would just create Docker Compose YAML file in your folder, in your root folder, and this file usually starts with your version information, and you will then specify services. We want the Python service. This Python service is based on Python 3.4 because we just tried that. Um, we want to mount. 
our local app folder into slash app and we want to start a command when we load this container and this command is gonna be cd app and pip install minus r requirements.txt and and python manage py run server so basically we are spawning a python container we are mounting the app folder like this one where my python app is yeah available and we are installing our requirements because this python container does not know about our requirements and we're running the server to start this image we're gonna do docker compose app oh mm, well it is volumes apparently <laughs> And we cannot start because executable file not in path. Okay, I don't know why this is happening. Uh, FYI, you can comment things here. If you don't provide a command, uh, the container will start and finish because you're not running any command. That's okay, exit code zero. So we have to provide a command. If you just want to examine the container, like with docker run minus at python bash, you could just say sleep infinity and it will sleep forever. It might not tell you any fancy messages here, but that's okay. You would then uh, say docker compose because we're using docker compose, exec because we want to execute a command, python because we want to execute a command in the python service, bash, that's the command we want to execute. There we go, we are in the bash. Uh, we can go into the app folder, examine our application, everything is in place, okay, we can install our requirements, and I'm just doing it manually now. I mean, we will see what is going on, it will tell you what is going on. Um, I can say Python manage to try run server now. There we go. But I have one problem. This IP, localhost, we will not be able to get here. This will be like not working. Yeah. Why is it not working? Well, Docker is essentially virtualized. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is well, virtualized, sandboxed. We're gonna have to say Docker that we wanna use the port 8000 and we want to map it to the port 8000 on our local machine um, to do that we're gonna control C in this container it will automatically kill this container here I believe or this, this Django manage py server if not we're gonna have to control C and exit yeah, there we go it's just exited and it exited here and we're gonna docker compose up again that's fine uh, we need to restart everything so we're gonna go in here again uh, it should keep the uh, the installed libraries because we didn't kill, well, we didn't delete the con No, it didn't. Mm. Apparently, it's not uh, staying, but nevertheless, I will show you how it will stay in place uh, in a second. Okay, I just started it now, and I'm going to run server. And let's see, it still doesn't work. Oh, it, I'm getting a different error now. The connection was reset because this server is listening on localhost, and this is within a Docker container which has its own network interface. We need to say run server that it should listen to any connection from anywhere, and now it should work. There we go, we got our application, and uh, we got our log. Great, okay. So far, so good. Um, there is a little bit of manual labor involved here, don't you think? And uh, to overcome that issue, I'm usually not saying use this image. I'm building my own image based on Python 3.4. To do this, I create a directory called Docker. And in that directory, I usually create a subdirectory for the service that I'm trying to modify or creating. And in that folder, I create a Docker file. This Docker file will just say, like, I'm inheriting from Python 3.4. I am the maintainer. Just write down your email address or something like that. And then we're just going to say we want to copy the local app folder to slash app. We want to set the working directory of this application to slash app. And we want to execute the command Python 
manage py run server 0.08000 and before that this is kind of our entry point before that we need to install our requirements so we have to run pip install requirements.txt we need to specify that we want to use this container instead of this image so I'm gonna comment out this image I'm gonna say build and the context of this build is our local folder and the docker file we are trying to build is docker python docker file next step we need to say docker compose build not up but build and it should build us our python container which takes a little bit of time because it will install the requirements similar as would as if you would have done it there we go and we can up our container and this time we should not need to do anything really um, no that's, this is wrong I need to remove this command here because we already specified our entry point command so and this should now start our run server yep we're still running it's up. I'm not seeing uh, a message here, but that's just a logging issue with uh, Django 1.8, not a Docker issue. Uh, to prove that things are working via my Docker container and not via, uh, via like some other magic, black magic or whatever, I'm just going to execute again into that Docker container and I'm going to take a look at what is running. There is currently two Python commands running. Don't ask me what the second one is, but we will find out. And there's two commands running right now. Okay. Let's see what is going what is going on. I think it is is it PS minus AT ATS? No. I I'm a noob with PS on the command line, <laughs> I have to admit. Um PS list. No. Okay. I'm not able to verify that this is actually coming from a Docker container. Um other than just like opening uh, top and hammering the refresh button. But we should see that the CPU of one of these Python processes is raising. Yeah, there we go. This one is this one is climbing. Um, obviously, this is not a, a good scientific test, uh, but believe me, it's coming from that container. This is within that container and now nowhere else. Now, what we should try is we should try and modify the app and see if binding if the binding of the app works. So I'm just gonna modify the admin path. Oh, now we're getting log. There we go. And it did just uh, reload the the application because we did that. So if I go to admins, there we go. I've got admins. If I remove that again, it should reload our app. Not getting logging again, but yeah, it's not available here. And it's available here. Okay, great. So that's it for uh, just getting Docker Compose and Docker running. Basically, you just specify a, a build context, context here and you have your Docker file where you specify what you want to have. Now, this application of ours is a little bit easy. Like, this is not the whole story. We have a db.sqlite file, which, like, you probably know you're not going to run an SQLite file in most of your Docker applications. Uh, and another thing we didn't really take care about is what if we create a migration? Um, because this migration, like, you usually would just go, if you're in your virtual library, you would say Python, manage py, make migrations. This uh, is different in your Docker container. You would have to say Docker, compose, exec, Python. This is telling Docker to execute a command in Python, and then again Python because we want to execute the Python command. Manage py, make migrations. 
This will create any migrations if we had any, but there, there aren't any. Uh, same with migrate. If you want to migrate, we would use this command. If you want to do collect static, you could use this command, etc., etc. But there are some issues with that, and we're going to discuss them in the next video. Stay tuned, subscribe, like this video if you like it, and see you next time.